Hi guys, Jane here, and today I am reviewing The Dogs of Christmas by Bruce Cameron. So, it is January, but I had some extra books that I'd gotten for Christmas over the from the library, and I'm still in a Christmas mood, and this book I was so excited about because it is Dogs in Christmas. Two things, like dogs I'm always in the mood for, and you know, we're still in, you know, the Christmas mode a little bit. So, I was really stoked to read this book. And it's got a pretty interesting premise. So this guy named Josh, he is has never owned a dog in his life. And he lives in a cabin in the woods. His neighbor drops off a pregnant dog. And suddenly he finds himself, through a variety of circumstances, with a mama dog and five puppies that he has no idea what to do with, and the person who brought the dog is not picking his call, up his calls is no longer, like his phone's disconnected, and so Josh just does not know what to do. So he calls the animal shelter and talks to Carrie, and again, Josh has never been a dog owner, he's freaking out, and Carrie says, you know, we don't have the resources to foster these dogs right now. If you'll take care of them for now, we will adopt them out when they're eight weeks old and that'll be right around Christmas time and they'll be part of the dogs of Christmas program which is what they do um, what their shelter does they you know find good families and then present the puppies for Christmas with cute little collars and all the stuff so he has Carrie helping him take care of these puppies and they start to form a relationship so this premise sounds awesome and amazing and I loved the premise and if that is what the book had been what I told you and it it is but it's not um I would have probably really enjoyed the book however this book ended up being a two out of five for me despite being Christmas and dogs and having a premise that I frankly love like the basic trope there you know guy has a suddenly gets a dog and puppies and girl from the animals animal shelter teaches him how to take care of them and they fall in love these are all the things that i want in a book basically this book should have been at least a four out of five for me but it wasn't it was two out of five so let's talk about the couple things that i did like basically the best part of this book was the dogs love the dogs they really made the book for me, and almost all of my favorite moments in the, this book involve the dogs. So they're amazing, best part of the book. The other thing that I want to give the book props for is it is a clean romance. So I, I really, I don't mind a little bit of sexuality in a book, but this was a clean romance, and I really like that, and I give it props for that. It wasn't skeevy. So, that is about the only nice things, truly, truly nice things I can say about this book. Um, and I have a feeling my opinion's in the minority because this has pretty good ratings on Goodreads. So let me talk about the things that didn't work. And I'm going to try to do it without spoiling anything, but that may be difficult. I will decide in a minute if we're going to do a spoiler section. We, we probably are going to do a spoiler section so I can explain some of these problems a little better. Okay, so issue number one. I don't like the human characters, either of them. Like Carrie and Josh, I don't like either of them. And that made it really, really hard to like the romance that was going on in the books. Josh is a good guy. He just is very messed up, has too much emotional baggage, wimpy, he's not going to make anybody a good husband or a good boyfriend, just saying. Like, part of, I think, the point slash process of the book is him learning to let go of his past and move into the future. And I get that, but I didn't think it was well executed. He just has so much baggage, I just really couldn't, couldn't jump on board with him and like him as a character. Carrie's very kind of sassy and bossy, but not in a cute, sexy way, but in a kind of bitchy way. Just to be honest, I did not like her at all. Also, we only ever get kind of Josh's perspective on things, so Carrie doesn't get fully developed as a character. Um, 
both of them have really kind of dark stuff in their past that is a little too much for I think a Christmas book. Like I was picking this up wanting a light fluffy read and my guy and girl are just so damaged and messed up that it definitely wasn't the tone. You know, we've got a light fluffy Christmas read with puppies and these two really effed up characters. I mean, I'm just saying, they are messed up. They have no business being in relationships with anybody, let alone somebody else as damaged and messed up as they are. So that was a big problem. And then the other problem I had was that this book just has so much random bad stuff happening. It's just like, I felt like the author was like, what can I do now that'll just screw things up? And it just, it was so, so much. It was way too much to the point that it was like bad thing, bad thing, bad thing, bad thing to the point that I'm like, this is beyond unbelievable. Like a couple bad things make sense and I'm cool with it. And like, I kind of saw where he tied it up at the end that it had to be that way. But it was just so unbelievable. Like I could not suspend my disbelief and it's a Christmas book so I'm usually pretty good at being like yeah well it is Christmas yeah I could not suspend my disbelief with all the stuff that was happening in this book the bad stuff so that didn't really work for me basically I enjoyed the beginning and the setup um, there's some ways that you're misled in the beginning and Josh seemed like a really good character while I was being misled about some of the stuff in the beginning, I really liked him. But then when you learn a little bit more about him, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, you're just messed up. You're you're not like cute, adorable, I could fall for you. You're just baggage and probably need to see a therapist. The middle of the book, I really didn't enjoy. Other than the puppies. The puppies was, again, the best part of the book. Um, and I actually almost DNF'd it. I came really close. But I was so, it's a fairly short book. It's, it's nothing big. And I was, like I said, more than halfway through. And I did want to see what ended up happening with the puppies because there's a point in the story where Josh is trying to decide whether he's going to keep all the puppies plus mama dog. And Carrie's like, that's against the law. You can only have three dogs. So I was like, I did want to see what happened with the dogs because I did care about that. I didn't care about anything else. I didn't care whether Carrie and Josh got together. As a matter of fact, I thought, yeah, that's going to be a train wreck if they do. Um, and then I, the ending had some good parts, again, with the dogs. I liked the ending with the dogs. There was dog-related stuff that made me cry in the ending, but I didn't necessarily like the people getting together at the end, which, I mean, it's a Christmas romance. You knew that was going to happen, right? That's not really a spoiler. Yeah, I didn't care about that. I did not care about their relationship crap. I just wanted to see puppies. And yeah. All right. So let's get into the actual spoilers of this book. Um, if you'd like to know really specifically what didn't work and some of the actual spoilers, them getting together probably was a spoiler and I'm sorry if it was, but it's a Christmas romance -y book. If they didn't get together, it wouldn't be a Christmas romance. Just saying. So anyway, so the spoilers. Spoiler part of this book. If you don't want the book spoiled, uh, my social media is below. Like, subscribe. Have a nice day. See you next time. Jane. All right, so spoilers for this book. In the beginning, we're kind of, we're told that Josh has all these, that he's growing up in his family's, like, cabin, and he has these pictures of his, of, we, I assumed, and it's kind of implied that the woman on the walls of his house is, like, a, a wife that died. Like, that was the assumption. I assumed he was a widow, and the way he talks, you kind of think he is. Like, he kind of gives the impression that, I think her name was Amber, that him and Amber, you know, had this great life together, and, you know, he says things like, well, every time the phone rings, I think she's calling, but I know in my heart it's really not her, or it can't be her, or something like that. I loved the widower 
avenue. Like, I, I really do like widower guys and widower characters. Yeah, no. Amber left him for another man and comes back later and tries to F up his new relationship because she's a terrible person and he cannot get over her. And it was creepy. Like, he's got all these pictures of his ex-girlfriend on the wall and he talks about her as if she's dead and we get the impression that she's dead and she's not. She just left him for another man and he's got all her pictures still on the wall. And he still wants her back. But then, then he meets Carrie and, you know, just starts getting in his relationship and she kind of shows up and messes things up and then he ultimately chooses Carrie. He, he's... But, I mean, like, he doesn't even barely know Carrie and this other girl is kind of the love of his life except she left him for another man. It, it just, oh, no, it made me so mad. So then let's talk about these plot issues. Just, just saying, let's talk about these plot issues and the bad things that happen. Guy gets a dog dumped with him, a pregnant dog, by the neighbor he can no longer reach. He doesn't know anything about dogs, and he's kind of being a psycho about it, <sighs> including calling the vet and being like, I'll bring her in because I don't know. And they're like, she doesn't have to have puppies here. You know that, right? Dogs have puppies at home all the time. Call us if there's a problem. Well, the dog goes into labor during a meeting call that he's on, which results in him getting fired from his job because he's got to go deal with this dog. Takes her to the vet. Okay, so we've now had a dog dropped off. He's fired from his job. Takes her to the vet. All the puppies are dead. Stillborn puppies, dead, because the previous owner didn't give her nutritious enough dog food. I won't even go into what I think about that, but okay, so all the puppies are dead because of the dog food. Legit market dog food, it just was kind of low quality. Dead doggies because of dog food. So then, as he is returning home with this sedated dog, somebody leaves a box of other puppies on his in his truck but the puppies almost freeze because he doesn't realize they're there for like ever and it's a Colorado winter so by the time he brings them in he's pretty sure they're dead but he happens to be able to warm them up and then he attaches them to his dog or to the other dog who is there and it's like oh yay she gets to adopt the puppies at this point we're already pushing my belief thing but I'm still going okay so he's lost his job, his, the dog that he got, just got stuck with, has just had lost all her puppies, and now there's a box of frozen puppies on his car for her to adopt. Well, one of those puppies, just FYI, is blind, and later there's a coyote attack on the puppies, and it just, just so much, and I was just like, what? <laughs> just thing after thing, when they brought out that the one puppy was blind, I was like, really? all the other crap these people puppies have gone through and now the pup a puppy is blind and then you have coyotes and there was no point in the coyote attack like everything else i've said there's kind of a borderline reason for but mm, yeah and then carrie our first conversation with carrie is hey i've never had a dog before i don't know anything about dogs i just found five puppies in the back of my truck and you know, I do have a pregnant dog here. She just gave birth, but, and they're suckling right now, but I think I need to bring these dogs in because I don't know what to do with them. Well, that's basically going to kill them, she says. I don't have anybody who can foster them, and, you know, if you have a dog, a dog that can suckle them, why are, why are you sending them to me? You know? She's nasty. And it's like, how are you a, a, a shelter and you don't have the resources to take care of puppies? Like, yes. It would be fine if she would explain, you know, oh, they'll have a better chance of survival. Walk him through it. Don't be a biznatch. Sorry. Do not. She's terrible. And the whole book is like that. Like, he shows up to talk to her, and she's like, so you taking me on a date? Like, she's so entitled. I did not like Carrie at all. And, oh, my gosh. And, like, Josh is messed up. Not only does he have all these pictures, you find out that he is at home, at the home he grew up with because his parents got divorced and he can't let go of the memories of his home. But like he was 17 when they got divorced and it sounds like they had a really rough upbringing and he just doesn't remember it because he talks to his sister and she's like, yeah, you know, like there was a physical fight, right? And we had to leave for our safety because he got upset because mommy took Sissy and not him, but he's 17. And Sissy's like, no, no, you didn't want to go with us. I mean, this guy has so much baggage, 
And then Carrie, her mom's a drug addict. So she's literally like, oh, you're hot. I should check your house and make sure you're not on drugs. The, this book, it was just, it was, it was a train wreck. And I was so disappointed because guess what? I just wanted Christmassy dogs. Like literally, if the book had just been girl from the shelter, halfway nice, decent girl next door shows up and helps with the dogs, I'd have been okay with that. Widower, you know, maybe mourning the loss of his wife who wanted to have dogs, but they never did because he had never owned one before and he feels some regret that he never had dogs. That would have been a fine story. I'd have been all on board and it would have probably got a four out of five from me. Instead, I get this. Cute puppy on the cover, cute Christmasy stuff, dead puppies, blind puppies, coyotes, a man who is has pictures of his ex-girlfriend who left him for somebody else on his wall, another girl who's checking his bathroom to make sure he's not on drugs. It was just, oh my gosh, no. It was just not, not the story for me. And it was so not what I was expecting or what I wanted. So, yes, this book, I cannot recommend it. It just, it was, it was really pretty awful, in my opinion. I really did not enjoy it, and I thought it was messed up. And I was really surprised how good the ratings on Goodreads were, because to me, this book was a train wreck. It was a train wreck. The, the only good part was the dogs. And I will say, like, at the end, you can kind of see why the author had to do things the way he did, because the blind puppy comes into play later because Josh ends up keeping him and his brother the guide dog because he's got a little brother dog that kind of helps guide him and then the mama dog that Josh has gets they find her original owner not the guy who dropped her off she was a stolen dog so that's a whole nother can of worms like this yeah. guy steals a dog from his ex-girlfriend a pregnant dog from his ex-girlfriend to tick her off and then drops him at somebody else's house because he's a dick, I don't know. Anyway, so like, yeah, the blind dog thing was important because Josh kept the blind dog. And like, the them not being the mama dog's actual puppies, you know, kind of dealt with the legal issues of you just got rid of my dog's puppies. Like when the girl came back to claim Lucy, I think that was the name of the dog. Um, you know, she, there was no, well, those puppies really technically belong to me and you shouldn't have adopted them out because she's my dog, all this stuff. Like, I got some of it. There was no point in the coyote attack, though. No point in the coyote attack. But the, Or even him losing his job. That really wasn't an important step in the story. So I just felt like, like, I kind of got why he did some of the stuff at the end, but I didn't think it was well done. It didn't feel natural and I didn't like it. Like, if you need somebody else's puppies... They could have had like him call the shelter and be like, hey, this dog got dropped off and them say like, oh, we have a litter that needs fostering. Can you do that for us? So many things that could have been done that would have worked. None of it did. And instead, I got this train wreck. I'm so sad. I really wanted to love this and I didn't and I do not recommend. However, I will probably read at least try one of the author's other books because I did love the dogs. And I want to see if the dogs, if he does the story part better in the other books and still keeps all the doggy cuteness. So, yeah. Uh, skip this one. I don't know if his other books are better. I might give them a try, but not this one. You don't want to, you don't want this train wreck. All right, guys, social media below, like, subscribe, comment. Talk to you next time. Bye.